starting role. Opponents hitting 159 against her. Megan is the strikeout queen of the Pac-12 with 229 to her name in 2022. Here is Aaliyah Bellardi to start it off for the Utes. And the first pitch on your Sunday afternoon is a bouncing ball foul behind the plate. Nothing and one. We are underway. Seventy-two degrees in Westwood, a slight breeze of about seven miles an hour, very sunny day, nice crowd on hand. We're gonna go over three thousand attendance wise for the series. During the game today, the 0-1 bouncing ball foul at the plate. Count runs the nothing and two on the 299 hitting Aliyah Bellarde. Haley Denning and Elisa Bonstrom to follow. Bellarde with seven RBIs on the year. Los Alamitos High School product. There are seven starters for Utah today from the state of California. High fly ball, right field. First batter of the game goes yard on Megan Faremo. And the consecutive scoreless inning streak for UCLA the entire week is over. The Utes have struck first quickly. How many home runs did Aaliyah Bellardi have this year? None. Here is Haley Denning. Here's a 372 hitter from the left side. First pitch. Wave down and miss. And running start in the box. 0-1. Denning's got a team high 54 hits on the year. As for Bellardi, she now has two of Utah's four hits in the series. Denning has one other. Outfield playing her to the left. The 0-1 pitch. Waved out again and missed. Nothing into the count. First run all week here in this homestand. The Bruins have given up. Had the four-and-a-half inning game on Wednesday. And then, of course, the regulation low-scoring games in the first two games of this series. Grounded foul to the left. Nothing in two. Boy, the Utes, I'll tell you this much. They, just, they've had something destined, you know, th this weekend. One-nothing and two-to-nothing. They've been in it the whole week. Just the play here and a play there, really they're undoing this weekend. The 0-2 pitch, low and away. One ball and two strikes. Still a really good team. They have struggled through the Pac-12 at 5-12. And, and they have some really good players. They're top three. They're, they've been really good. Ground ball down to short. On the run, Perez throws the first on the sidearm throw just in time to get the speedy Haley Denning. One out. And here is Bonstrom. Each of the first two games in this series uh, with the Utes on Friday night, of course, trailing one to nothing, and then last night two to nothing. They got that leadoff hitter aboard in the seventh inning. And you're kind of somewhere deep in side thinking to yourself, well, uh-oh, here we go. We're going to have some late-inning drama in another tight, low-scoring Pac-12 game. Uh, both nights, Faremo and then last night, Azevedo getting out of the seventh inning. 1-0 to Bonstrom, the Utah hitting leader, looks at a strike, 1-1. One one. Bonstrom, 395. Of course, last night, the ball game ending on a 4-6-3 double play. Holly going 6-3 getting her 16th victory, and then Megan Azevedo coming in and throwing the last two-thirds. They get her sixth save. Two and one. Al 
They'll feel deep a couple of steps now to the right side. Two and one to Bonstrom. That is a high fly ball deep the right center field. And goodbye. Off the batting cage. And Utah has, at least for now, figured out Megan Faremo. They have never figured out Megan Faremo going back a few years. Coming into this game, Utah had a grand total of one earned run against Megan in 29 and two-thirds. They have two home runs in this first inning alone. Julia Jimenez will step in, but not before Lisa Fernandez will walk to the circle. So Bonstrom, unlike Bellarde, is a home run hitter. That is her team high 11th, RBI number 39. And the Bruins are going to have to come back in this one. Of course, you got all day to do it, but not sure many people were expecting this start. And, you know, Utah has had plenty of looks against Megan. This group, of course, going back last year and then this weekend. Complete game shutout Megan threw on Friday and then got the last two outs last night. Here's Jimenez, first pitch is going to hit the outside corner for a strike. Tanya Garrett calling the balls and strikes in this one. Everybody rotates a bag. Calvin Walker over to first base. Eric Hawthorne on third. 1-0 pitch. That's outside. Utah had hit 32 home runs in their first 47 games this year. That one is low. Home runs number seven and eight allowed by Megan Faramo in Pac-12 contests. And overall, home runs number 17 and 18 allowed by Megan in 2022. A little flare pop-up right side. Kinsley Washington in front of the bag for the second out. So Megan has retired Denning and Jimenez and has given up a long ball to Bellardi and Bonstrom. Here is Jordan Gasper, the senior out of Santa Clarita, Hart High School product. Exactly half of their roster from California and most in the starting lineup today. First pitch. Hits the outside corner. Strike one, says Tanya Garrick. Nothing in one. Gasper, 286. She is driven in 26. Gasper is one for five in the series. The 0-1 pitch. That is high. One ball, one strike. And, yes, Gasper was in center field last night when uh, Brianna Perez hit the inside the park home run, hit the top of the wall. Not much, frankly, Jordan could do with it. It just ricocheted well away from her coming off the top of the wall. The 1-1 is going to miss two balls and one strike, and it had to be picked up by her teammates who would, reel the, who would uh, bring the ball back in. The throw eventually got to the plate, but Brianna never thought twice about it. Just kept on going, slid in safely for her first career inside the park home run and her ninth home run of the year. Count moves to two balls and two strikes. Two and two, two outs, bases empty as Utah has gone yard twice here to start the ball game. Two, two. That misses outside. Working with Delaney Wiz today is Megan Faremo into her tall stretch. 3-2, ground ball through the middle, up into center field. It's too fast for Faremo to get her glove down right through the middle. Third hit for Utah. 
They had a total of three hits in the series coming into this game. Here's Lumberg, batter number six for the Utes to start the game, and again in the number six spot as she was last night, a strike thrown 0-1. Lumberg, the designated player in her initial season, 11 for 35 on the year with one homer and eight batted in. Another Southern California kid out of Lakewood. Right-handed hitter, bent at the knees, the 0-1 pitch. That's driven foul, left-hand side, and... Advantage for Amo, nothing and two. Meanwhile, game three underway in the Arizona State California series, and already the Sun Devils out to a two nothing first inning lead. O two pitch fouled away. And to reiterate, Bruins and Sun Devils with seven to play, including this one today, tied at 15 and two in the Pac-12. They'll meet, they'll see each other next weekend in Tempe. But uh, if you're a Bruin fan, not a good start either side. Two bounces at third base. Kuro could not get her glove out. Could not to get the ball out of her glove in time. And everybody's safe. And a two hopper down there. And a problem getting the ball out. The throw is late. It goes as the fourth hit for Utah. Two on, two out. Here is White, the number seven hitter. Swings at a off speeder upstairs, nothing in one. So Gasper on second, Lundberg on first. 0 1 the count to a 188 hitting uh, Destiny White, who was out of the lineup in game two, fouled back there. So again, Framo's got an 0 2 count. Game times next weekend, if you're wondering, uh, in Tempe, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 12 noon. Well, first two games slightly on the earlier side. May very well have a Pac-12 pennant on the line. Obviously, you got other games, namely the one today, to worry about. And, and the final three, California here, May 12, 13, 14. That's a Thursday through Saturday series. 1-2 pitch. Foul back. Then you'll have Selection Sunday on May 15th. White showing bunt, pulls her bat back. Little number up the third base line. This will be picked up by Kuro. And on the run, it is out of the glove of Washington. Utah is up three to nothing. The top of the first continues. Well, the throw, no doubt, beat Destiny White, but the ball came out of the glove of Kinsley Washington for the first error of the ball game. But in and out of the glove of Kinsley Washington at first base to continue the half inning. Now Utah one batter away from hitting a round on UCLA in the inning. Here's the number eight hitter, Falk. 207, five homers, 13 batted in, takes ball one. Well, what a nice job by Holly last night, six and a third.
winning pitcher to go to six, uh, 16 and 2. Didn't walk anybody, struck out four. 72 pitches on the night. Megan came in and got her sixth save. Count goes to two balls and no strikes. And Azevedo just gave up that one infield single. In fact, it was a comeback to her late in the game. And she got her glove down to her left, but it was just so hard hit that it just could not stay in her glove. And I believe, well, let's see. Was that a foul ball? Not sure what the call is, or did it hit the bottom of the bat and stay fair? There's a conversation here. I thought Tanya Gehrig had ruled that a foul ball. Kirk Walker is out there talking with her. There's going to be an umpire discussion. The other possibility, I guess, a pass ball, but I. Let's see what comes of this. If the call stands, Utah is going to have the bases loaded. All right, so runners go back, and Katie Falk. You know, there's all sorts of confusion. Is Katie Falk still up there at 2-1? and one? All right, so it was, in fact, ruled a foul ball, which I thought was the original signal, so I'm not really sure why there was so much confusion after that, but the count is two and one. It's ruled a foul ball. White still on second, and Falk still on first. I check that. Falk is at the plate. White's on first. Two and one is the count. That ball is flared down the right field line, so this is going to bring at least one more Ute in. And they'll have him on the corners on a hit down the right field line by Falk. Oh, boy, what a disastrous start for the Bruins here in the top of the first. Four runs on five hits. Utah's going to bat around on uh, Faremo and Azevedo here. Shelby Ortiz will now be the hitter. There are two outs. Utah's going to have them on the corners. Four in. And Amy Hogue doesn't even let Shelby Ortiz at the plate. It's going to be Sophie Hawkes coming in as a pinch hitter. And the number nine spot came in and pinched it last night was taken out early in Friday's game. And she swings and misses there, 0-1-1. So Falk on first, White on third. Lundberg comes across as the fourth run. Utes finally able to figure out the Bruin pitching. The 0-1 pitch. That's off speed and just off the plate, one and one. This is the second best staff in terms of team ERA in the country. Lowered it to 1.18, the Bruins did, for a team ERA. Only behind Oklahoma. Oklahoma. 
The 1-1 to Hawkes. That is low. Hawkes, a sophomore from Rancho Murrieta, went to Pleasant Grove High. 5-3, left-handed hitter. 0-for-1 as a pinch hitter last night. 0-for-3 as a starter Friday night. 2-1. That's hit in the air foul. Evens up the count. Several times now the Bruins have had two strikes with two away. Let's see if it's successful this time around and getting this third out. Azevedo's 2-2. A little English on the ball on a comebacker. Holly's got it. The throw to first in time. The youth strand two, but I would say damage done. Oh, and here are the Bruins finally for the first time today. Kinsley Washington, Brianna Perez, Delaney Wiz, the top three. Sydney Sandez with a nice cushion. Got no support on Friday night. First pitch is in there for a strike to Washington, 0-1. Maya Brady, Savannah Pola, Seneca Curro in the middle. Alyssa Garcia, Anna Vines, Kelly Good in the bottom three. Take a look at Utah on defense. Out in left field, Alyssa Bonstrom. In center field, Jordan Gasper. And Shelby Ortiz in right field. Foul tip. Strike two to Kinsley Washington. Across the infield, Julia Jimenez at third. Haley Denning at short. Aliyah Bellardi at second base, and Destiny White at first base. Behind the plate, Katie Falk. And Sidney Sandez, 8-9, an ERA of 2.69. The right-hander in the circle and throws it 0-2. Chopper to Denning on one hop. Throw across, one away. Here comes Brianna Perez. Eleven out of the last 12 Pac-12 games for the Bruins have been decided by one or two runs. Of course, UCLA winning most of those, all but two. Uh, living very dangerously many times. And you got to wonder if it's caught up to them in game three. Of course, if you're going to fall behind, obviously, might as well do it in the first inning. Bruins... Down four early, nothing and one to Brianna Perez. Now hitting 389, got her ninth home run of the year the long way. Uh, last night, an inside the park shot, 34 runs batted in. That one comes low, one ball, one strike. Perez, the next time she scores, she will tie Natasha Watley for the all-time Bruin lead in runs scored. Brianna also with 306 career hits, one of four Bruins all-time to do that in terms of passing 300. The 1-1 pitch, that is fouled away. Brianna now number three all-time in career hits. Recently surpassed her older sister Kylie on that chart. 16 away now from Stacy Newman. Watley is not catchable in that category. And then Brianna also three career triples away from the all-time lead of 21. She has 18 to her name. The 1-2 pitch, ground ball the other way, a couple of hops, and just in time, nice patient play by Aliyah Velarde. Backed up a couple of steps on a chopper and made the short throw. Here is Delaney Wiz. But, you know, in spite of all the close games we've had in the Pac-12 this year, and we, we talked about it, the Bruins are still tied for first in the conference, and UCLA has won most of these games by one or two runs. The one area that might be of concern, the pitch to Delaney Wiz, is in there for a strike. The Bruins are averaging less than three and a half runs per game in the Pac-12 this year getting about half the production as their overall numbers in 2022. The 0-1 to Delaney Wiz hit inside out and into right field. Delaney Wiz gets a base hit, had her 33 consecutive on base streak uh, snapped in the series. Gets a nice hit there. 
And outside of Delaney Wiz, it's really been Brianna Perez and I'll even give you Alyssa Garcia who have been doing the hitting in conference games this year. Outside of that trio, it's been a struggle pretty much. Here is Maya Brady, 298 overall, but just 212 is Maya in the Pac-12, and that's a strike, 0-1-1. So that is one area of concern. Got to get the bats going again and ride some momentum as we get close to regional play. The 0-1. Outside, one ball, one strike. Of course, uh, UCLA really romped on Cal State Fullerton this week for 13 runs. So that was nice to see. But these conference games have just been gut-wrenching. 11 of the last 12 decided by one or two. And then prior to last night, six straight decided by one run. The Bruins, nonetheless, at the top of the standings. Two balls and one strike. Wiz on first with two away. Bruins down big early. Game three to the Utah Utes. A strike thrown, two and two. And we've talked about it all weekend. This Utah team, 23-24 uh, and 24 overall, 5-12 and 12 in the conference, but they have had some very interesting results this year. 2-2. Two, two. That is low. The two tight games, of course, this weekend with number three UCLA, a two to one loss to top ranked Oklahoma this year. This team's got some wonderful players. Payoff pitch to Maya Brady, swing and a miss. The Bruins leave a runner in the bottom of the first and outfield. Start the second inning, shallow and to the left, corners creeping in. First pitch to Aliyah Bellardi is in there for a strike, 0-1. Sophomore, Los Alamitos High School product, first home run. Going over the right field wall off of Megan Faramo. Holly Azevedo got the third out in the first inning and a bunt foul, nothing in two. Framo in two-thirds, four runs on three hits, two of the runs earned. The Bruins did have an error at first base. Gave way to Utah scoring that third run. 0-2 pitch. Check swing and a strike. Two outs. Yes, she did. Holly had four strikeouts last night. Gets her first one in a long relief roll today. 31 pitches for Megan in two-thirds of an inning, 22 of them going for strikes. But again, charged with all four runs. Here's Denning. 370 hit her second team all Pac-12 honoree last year. Bouncing ball, foul back, 0-1-1. Now the Bruins retired Denning in the first inning, so she's one for six in the series. Haley's actually been one of the top hitters in the Pac-12 in both of these years. The 0-1 pitch. Bunt is going to dribble foul. Picked up by Kuro. And uh, Holly's ahead, nothing in two. Bottom of the second in Tempe, Arizona State two, California nothing. Stanford and Washington wrapping up their series in Seattle. No score third inning.
Oregon, Oregon State a little bit later on. 0-2 to Denning, waved out and missed, strike three. The ball gets away from Wiz, so strikeout recorded 2-3. to three. And another K in the books, and Holly will settle things down. There's no question. Question really is, can the Bruins get a handful or more runs in this game? Assuming the Bruins shut him down the rest of the way, that is. Here's Bonstrom. That's inside ball one. And Utah has gotten some great pitching in this series, no doubt about it. Sandez on Friday, Lopez in the relief role Friday, and then in the starting role last night. Lopez struck out seven last night. There's a strike. One and one to Bonstrom. 11th home run of the year. RBI number 39 in the first inning. Now Bonstrom had been 0 for 5 this weekend prior to that home run. The 1-1. One, one. That's popped up. Anybody's ball, really, and it's in front of the circle. Seneca Kuro getting in front of Kinsley Washington. Holly directing the traffic there. And Utah and goes to Pac-12 sweep in a row, but going to have to come back big today to do it. Down 4-0. 341, five homers, 36 RBIs. The numbers this year for the three-time Pac-12 freshman of the week, and she looks at ball one. Pola also a finalist for National Freshman of the Year honors. There are 25 on that list, as there are on the National Player of the Year award watch list, which includes Megan and Holly. Both the 1-0 pitch popped up. This one will clear the screen behind the plate. 1-1. One one. Pola one for two as the designated player last night. 0 for 1 with a run scored on Friday night. But again, quite the difference between what she is hitting overall and what she has been hitting in the Pac-12. 341 overall, 224 in conference games. 2-1 and one is the count. Two one pitch. That's taken for a strike on the outside corner to the left hand at Savannah Pola. Bruins back with seven lefties in the starting lineup today. Utah with five lefties. And the two two to the freshman. Rip foul left hand side. As I'm sure everybody's aware, the Bruins are 18-0 this year at Easton Stadium. With a 2-2 pitch, ground ball foul to the left. 18-0 at home, 7-2 in true road games, 14-3 neutral site for a total of 39-5. Seven straight victories. 15 and 2, tied for first in the Pac 12. 2 2 to Pola. Grounded foul again the other way. We'll do it again. Utah on the road this year in true road games, 5 and 10. Neck and neck at the bottom of the conference with Oregon in the standings. Oregon, uh, Playing well against their rivals from Corvallis this weekend. 2-2 pitch. Strike three. It's 
a great pitch. They've placed quite a few of those this weekend. One out. Here comes Seneca Kuro. Yeah, Seneca had the only RBI of the game on Friday night. It was her 20th RBI on a ground ball to the right side, scoring Pola from second. That was all the Bruins needed. Swing and a miss there, 0-1. Last night, Kuro nothing for three. Now hitting 262, the sophomore is. And down on the count here, nothing and two. Give the Sun Devils two more runs. They're up four to nothing in the third inning. Where we're at in this ballpark, though on the wrong side. 0 2 on the way. Grounded foul. Alyssa Garcia is on deck. There is one out. O2 from Sandez. That's a high fly ball, left center field. It's got some distance, but on the run and with her momentum onto the track, the play is made by Jordan Gasper. Two outs. Here is Alyssa Garcia. Garcia in her 12th Pac-12 game. She's been hitting over 300 in the conference games this year, 312 overall with a homer and eight batted in. On a designated player role today, she's been doing a nice job in the conference. Obviously doing some of the catching as well. First pitch to Garcia, driven foul. A little more on Sidney Sandez, uh, today's starting pitcher for the Utes. He's six foot right-handed senior from Chula Vista. Went to Olympian High School. Comes from a long line of very good athletes in her family. Her mother was part of the Mexican senior national team. Sydney herself part of the junior national team. And her mother, her mother was a great pitcher at San Diego State, as was her aunt. Her uncle played baseball here at UCLA and in the Seattle Mariners organization for a little while. 1-1 to Alyssa Garcia. That is outside. 2-1. and one. I thought she looked really good on Friday night. Just maybe one or two bad pitches. And a tough luck, 1-0 loss. 2-1 pitch to Garcia. Driven in the left field. Base hit. Yeah, Garcia's been hitting. She's been doing a nice job. Two out single. And we'll see if the Bruins can continue to drive in some runs with two outs and early in the game. That's what UCLA has been doing so well. Really, all, you know, all these years, but it seems like it's been even more so this year. Here is Anna Vines. Vines in the number eight spot, 262, no homers. RBI's number 11 and 12 early in Friday night's game. First pitch. That is driven down the left field line, just foul. Oh, just off the chalk. Correction, I think I said Friday night, so it was not Friday night. I meant the non-conference game against Cal State Fullerton. Had those two early RBIs. Anna had one hit, 
last night, but she was an over on Friday night. So one for four this weekend. Oh and one. Swing and a miss. Boy, a nice drop ball there from Sandez. Nothing in two. Last of the order on deck, and Kelly Gooden. There are two outs, 0-2. And, and one brushes up against the dirt. One ball and two strikes. We've got Alyssa Garcia on first base. Alyssa has actually been uh, pinched run for multiple times this week. Uh, they decide to forego it here in the second inning. Down four to nothing. The wind up by Sandez in the pitch. Uh, waved at and missed. Took something off of that. And Sandez came in in the first inning with two gone. As Utah really pounced on Megan Faramo in the first inning. Megan charged with all four runs. First pitch to Jimenez is low and in, ball one. Right handed hitting junior from Fontana. An All-American at Etowanda High School. 2021 All-Big Ten at Michigan last year. And uh, she hit 293 in her initial collegiate uh, season at uh, the University of Michigan. That's low and in. Jimenez uh, has been playing third base for the Utes, although she got 37 starts at second base last year for Michigan. Nine other starts for the Wolverines at the hot corner. 2-0. Julia hitting 322 this year. Towering fly ball, hooking well foul. Amongst the trees. 2-1. Well, we're going to be here all day on campus. Uh, a little bit later on at 5 o'clock, NC2A tournament begins down at Poly Pavilion in men's volleyball. I'll have that for you on the UCLA live stream. It's a match between Princeton and North Greenville. That's an opening round match. Winner moves on to the next round Tuesday night. As for the Bruins in men's volleyball, they'll be involved in an opening round match at 5 p.m. this Tuesday night against Pepperdine. 2-1 pitch. Bunt is foul. 2-2. Two, two. Opening round matches. All three of them today and Tuesday right here on UCLABruins.com. Should the Bruins advance beyond Tuesday, we'll have the audio for you Thursday and then hopefully Saturday in the semifinals and final. From Pauley Pavilion, the UCLA men's volleyball team. A couple of other UCLA athletic teams getting ready for the NC2A tournaments. Women's water polo begins their run on May 6th. Popped up, right-hand side, Kinsley Washington or Delaney Wiz. Oh. One out. Both players a run at it, right up against the screen. Besides the on-deck circle, it was Delaney Wiz with the play. One gone. Here is Jordan Gasper, the Utah center fielder. UCLA women's golf getting ready for their postseason. NC2A's uh, in the regionals, number two seed in Tallahassee coming up. All the potential to make a strong run. UCLA Beach Volleyball, number three in the country. They'll be involved in the NC2A tournament as well. 0-1-1. Gasper is one for one, now hitting 291, and is driven in 26. That's low and away, one and one.
Jordan is two for six this weekend. Utah had a grand total of three hits across the first two games of this series. They had four hits alone in the first inning today. Two balls and one strike. Outfield a few steps to the left, medium deep. Corner is just about even with their bags. A few steps off the line. And Azevedo's 2-1. Swung on and a foul tip into Wiz's glove. 2-2. Two two. Holly looking in, winds up the 2-2 on the way. That's hit in the air, left field, and backpedaling a few steps. And with the catch, Kelly good in, two outs. So that's two full innings now for Holly Azevedo. She is allowed just the one hit, two strikeouts. Seven batters faced. This next pitch here will be her 30th in this long relief roll as Lundberg stands in. And the first pitch to the Utah designated player in there for a strike, 0-1. 16-2 and 2 is Holly. Of course, uh, recently became the 18th player in UCLA softball history to collect 50 career wins. She now has 58. Career record of 58 and four. After winning the game last night, that's a foul ball. Third baseline. And uh, she, along with Megan Faramo and Lauren Shaw, have combined to throw six no hitters this year, three of which have been perfect games. Last time a Bruin pitching staff combined for six no-hitters in a season. Got to go all the way back to 2002. O2 2 to Lundberg, driven into center field. That's going to be a base hit. Second hit allowed by Holly in this relief roll. Lundberg is one for two. And here comes Destiny White. Destiny White was the player that was up there with the ground ball to third. It should have been the third out, and it cost the Bruins an unearned run when Washington did not hang on at first. First pitch to White is in there for a strike. 0-1-1. Going bunt, White pulls her bat back as Holly misses inside. One ball, one strike. Destiny is from Vacaville, Vacaville High School, 5'3", right-handed junior. Over for 4 in the series, didn't play last night. A strike thrown there, 1 and 2. Lundberg on first. Holly looking in, working with Delaney Wiz. The 1-2 pitch, hit foul. Another run scored, meanwhile, for Arizona State. They're up five to nothing in the bottom of the third. It appears the Sun Devils have that series under control, setting up 
next weekend showdown. Question is, can the Bruins come back in this one? One, two pitch, ground ball down a short. Brianna with it, goes the short way. Anna Vines covering. And the Utes will strand a runner at the top. Four nothing Utes here in game three, looking to salvage the series. Also looking to beat UCLA for the first time since 2017. First pitch to good and a comeback are in and out of Sandez glove. The throw is gonna be sent right up against the Utah bullpen and Gooden will take second base. Almost made the catch on the comebacker, came out of Sandez glove. And for her sake, you have to wonder, was it worth it to even throw it? She was not gonna get Gooden at that point at all. And then compounded the problem by throwing the ball away, a ball that went all the way up against the right field bullpen wall. And Gooden is now on second to start things off for UCLA in the bottom of the third. That is an error all the way on the throw. Each team with one error in this game. So Kinsley Washington, 0 for 1, will stand in. One for three on Friday, 0 for three last night. And one for seven in the series after a three for three Wednesday night against Cal State Fullerton. That ball driven into left and short hopped. So the Bruins will have two on and nobody out. Obviously, Gooden could not do a thing. Because you don't know what's going to happen there. And at least for a moment, the ball looked like it may have held up enough for Bonstrom to have a shot at it, but did not go for the dive. The ball drops and short hop by Alyssa Bontram. And Washington has her second hit in the series, her fifth hit this week. Two on, nobody out, and now it is Sandez who will get a visit from her dugout. And the first to see here will be Brianna Perez. So Amy Hogue. The 15th year head coach for Utah, giving UCLA another look. Two on and nobody out. There's ball one. Third pitcher we have seen this weekend for Utah. At one point or another, Utah has had six pitchers get some sort of playing time. The 1-0 pitch in there. One and one. A little more on Shai Smith, the all-time Seattle U record holder for strikeouts per seven innings. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss. And opponents hit 231 against her. That was also an all-time best in school history. Led uh, Seattle U to a WAC tournament championship win over to Mexico State last May. Count moves to two and two on Brianna Perez. Two two to Perez, high fly ball, deep to center field. It's off the top of the wall. The ball comes in from Gasper, and everybody just goes station to station. Bases are loaded. Boy, how many times this week have we seen a ball practically at the top of the wall off the Bruin bats? Several. I know Maya Brady's had a couple of them. Brianna Perez goes to the top of the center field wall here. And if you're on the bases for the Bruins, you have to just wait. You know, you can't really do anything. And UCLA has been ultra aggressive on the base pass. You know, this weekend, no exception. And they've been thrown out several times and trying to, you know, either go from first to third or to the plate or whatnot. Popped up left-hand side. So there is a gift for the Utes as Delaney Wiz is erased.
So here is Maya Brady. Nice time for Maya here perhaps to break out of a little bit of a shell. She's hitting 296 overall. But now in the low 200s in the Pac-12, she has been quiet of late. 0 for 1 in this one. And that's a strike, 0 and 1. Oh, one to Brady. That's upstairs. One ball, one strike. So UCLA now with the possible tying runner at the plate. Down four to nothing in the bottom of the third with one out. Got Gooden on third. Washington's in on second. Perez on first. One and one count to Maya Brady. Up and away, two and one. On deck is Savannah Pola. Brady is one for seven in this series. Struck out in the first inning. Looks at one off the plates. Ball three. I think you take the, the uh, next pitch here. Or at least be ultra selective. Three one from Shy Smith. Swing and a miss. Now yeah, that. Might have been on the corner. I don't know. Three and two. Each team now with five hits in this game, but Bruins need to push some runs across. Payoff pitch. Ground ball down to second. Could be two, and it is. First time around. We'll see what if they go back with her, and then the top and Aliyah Bellardi. Falk is one for one. First pitch from Holly Azevedo is taking ball one. Singled in the first part of that four run inning. That one's going to miss outside. Two and oh. Cal is on the board, meanwhile, in the top of the fourth. They score once. It is 5-1, to one, Arizona State. ASU with the mercy rule win last night after Cal had scored the first two runs of the game. Count moves to 3-0 and oh on Falk. Quick word from Delaney Wiz. Falk, one of three starting seniors in the lineup this afternoon for the Utes. Gasper and Bonstrom, the other two. And the three ball pitch. It's upstairs. Lead off walk. So the Utes in the top of the fourth have their leadoff player aboard. We will have a pinch runner. Ball coming out. And going in, it looks like A.J. Militello. So this is going to be Shelby Ortiz. First plate appearance. Jaquez came in first time around. So back to Ortiz, who is just two for ten, minimal number of at-bats on the year. 37th ball game for Ortiz. Running start, looking to get a butt down. It goes foul up against the screen, nothing and one. 
This is a sophomore left-handed hitter out of Huntington Beach. Went to Huntington Beach High. Oh, one from Azevedo looking to get the bunt down, and it's going to go in and out of the glove of Delaney Wiz all the way to the backstop. Now the Utes with a runner on second and nobody out. One one pitch. That's gonna miss outside two and one. Azevedo winds up the 2-1 pitch. The bunt is going to be down but foul. So 2-2 two and two to Ortiz. Elotello pinch running at second. Bouncing ball foul behind the plate. Keep it two and two. Ortiz battling here with Azevedo. This is the 11th batter Holly has faced in this long relief roll. 45 pitches into her afternoon. 2-2 pitch, comebacker, Azevedo, quick check, throw to first, and just in time. One out. So back to the top of the order, Bellardi. Lardy, very first batter of the game, her first home run over the right center field wall. Eighth RBI, hitting 302 now. Bouncing ball to the left, Perez with it, throws the first, and that'll be just in time for the second out. Militello, however, to third base. And here is Haley Denning. Denning is 0 for 2, a ground out in the first, a strikeout in the second. 1 for 7 this weekend. The outfield plays her to the left. Running start in the box, chopper in front of the plate. This is trouble. And that is another Utah run. Sixth hit for the Utes. The fifth run is on the board. And Bonstrom will stand in. That goes as an RBI infield single for Haley Denning, her second hit of the series. Bonstrom, one for two in this one, will stand in. First run charged to Azevedo. There goes the runner. Throw down a second. Great throw and a great tag by Perez. Very well done by both Wiz and up. five to nothing. 
here, looking to salvage the series and looking to snap a nasty 13-game losing streak to the Bruins. First pitch swinging by Pola, and that is a routine 4-3 ground out. Here's Seneca Kuro. Alyssa Garcia to follow. Anna Vines, if either get on. First pitch to Kuro. Shai Smith back to work, meanwhile. That's inside ball one. So Holly Azevedo, that was the first run charged to her today in the fourth inning. Shai Smith in relief of Sandez. Ground ball foul to the left. Smith in an inning and a third. Got out of potential damage in the bottom of the third on the double play ball. And now Smith in relief, an inning and a third, has just allowed one hit. This is the fifth batter she has faced. Her 14th pitch of the day is a swing and a miss, one and two. So with Smith pitching at the moment, Sandez not in line for the win. That is high. Two and two. Sandez pulled after two complete, probably at the right time as it turned out. Amy Hogue pulling the plug on her, and Bruins getting another look in the order at her, and they decide to give UCLA a third look for the weekend in uh, Shai Smith. That one is low. Three and two. Bottom of the fifth in Seattle, Washington three, Stanford one. Number eight, Northwestern all over Iowa today, nine nothing. Number one, Oklahoma again all over Kansas, nine to one. Beat them 19 nothing yesterday, and that ball grounded foul to the left. Extra innings, number 11, Florida beats number 25, LSU, two to one. Number 18, Clemson, in extra innings, beats Georgia Tech 3-2. to two. Number 5, Arkansas, again, shuts out South Carolina 8 to nothing. The 3-2 foul ball. Number 22, Michigan, defeats Minnesota 8-4. to four. And number 14, Kentucky, beats Mississippi State today 9-5. Number 17, Central Florida, shuts out Tulsa, 8 to nothing. 3-2 to Seneca Kuro, popped up, foul territory, no play. Brushes up against the screen. Next one to Kuro, outside on the payoff, so that is a one-out walk issued to Seneca Kuro. And here comes Alyssa Garcia. Garcia with a nice opposite field hit in the second inning today. Alyssa's uh, batting average in Pac-12 games right on pace with what she's did in the non-con, what she's done in the non-conference season. 327 overall, and this weekend she has gone over 300 in conference games. One on and one out. Bruins down five here in the bottom of the fourth. 0-1 pitch. Yeah, kind of like a 
Half-hearted swing there, 0-2. Anna Vines is next. And down to Gooden, the 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss. Two gone. And here is Anna Vines. Sandez in a starting role today had three strikeouts. That one right there was Shy Smith's first. They've only walked one batter today. Utah pitching has. Utah, one of the best in the country in keeping walks down. First pitch to Vines outside, ball one. The Utes are only walking 0.68 batters per seven innings of pitching this year. That is number six in the country. Last night ran into a little bit of an issue as uh, Mariah Lopez did walk three batters. She struck out seven. Two and out of Vines. Smith winds up, and that ball driven foul, left hand side, two and one. Fine struck out in the second. One for two last night. 0 oh for two in game one. So one for five this weekend against the Utes. 2-1. Ground ball through the middle and a diving play. Yes, in time. Wow, what a play by the shortstop, Haley Denning. Here is Bonstrom to start the fifth. Utes by five. Bonstrom, Jimenez, and Gasper. Bonstrom one for two. Hit her 11th home run of the year. Trying to drag a bunt down. It goes foul. Nothing and one. Bonstrom has since popped up after that home run ball. So she's still hit, uh, sitting with that one hit in this series. Of course, the home run ball. There have been two outside the park home runs this weekend. Of course, one inside the park. Both outside the park in the first inning today for the Utes. Bellardi's first, Bonstrom's 11th. One and one. One one. Holly has a Vado misses inside and Delaney Wiz turns her head. I think she wants to know where that one was. It's two and one. Outfield deep, couple of steps over towards the right, the 2-1 pitch. The bunt is going to be foul, 2-2. Two and two. Last time the Utes defeated UCLA, it was right in this ballpark, 2017, a series which they swept in their super regional season. Since then, it's been the Bruins 13 straight times in this series. 2-2 pitch, off speeder, grounded foul. Ahead of that pitch was Bonstrom. Six different Utes have one hit in this game.
2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Holly Azevedo gets a strikeout to begin the fifth. Third strikeout for Holly. She's also walked the batter and has been charged with one run, unearned run, on uh, three hits today she's given up. This pitch here to Jimenez will be her 57th of the day. And that is inside ball one. Jimenez, a pop-up to Washington and a foul out uh, behind the plate. Driven in 47 this year. That began the week third most in the Pac-12. 47 driven in. 319, nine home runs. 1-0 pitch. Taken for strike. 1-1. Very nice crowd again today for game three. The UCLA band in attendance sitting off the third base side. And right around the same crowd we had Friday and Saturday. We actually had 77 more people here last night than in game one. The 1-1 pitch, that's driven down the left field line, just foul. And look out, Eric Hawthorne. Today's third base umpire. Moving quickly. And the 1,035 in attendance Friday, 1,112 last night. Today certainly gets us over 3,000 for the series. Holly Azevedo has been in there since two outs in the first. There's a high fly ball, right center field. It's off the top of the wall, and it will be a long single. And that thing just missed a home run by not even an inch. Boy, we have seen more balls hit the top of the wall this week in this park. Um, Here is Gasper. So the longest possible single you can have. Done right there by Jimenez. Jimenez, the seventh Ute to record a hit today. Gasper is one for two. That ball hit foul right-hand side amongst the customers off the first base dugout. 0-1-1. Jordan Gaspers had a very busy series at the plate and in center field. Wind up and pitch, grounded the other way. Throw by Kuro, getting the lead runner. So Jimenez is going back to the dugout. Two outs. Good decision. She played it well enough to be able to go to second. Coming down that third base line. Here's Lundberg. And the freshman out of Lakewood High School, one for two in this one. 324 for the season. Uh, that's a towering fly ball deep to left, and Utah has its third home run of the game. And that might have been the knockout punch officially. Bruins will have nine outs to play around with, but I don't think you were expecting a 7-0 deficit today. Little homecoming here for Kendall Lundberg out of Lakewood High School. And she hits her second home run, second career home run. RBI's number 9 and 10. And 
When was the last time the Bruins trailed by seven at Easton Stadium? That one I would have to look up. All three pitchers the Bruins have used this year. Lexi Sosa has made uh, three appearances, but just in five innings of work. So the deficit is seven to Utah. A strike thrown by Shaw to White, 0-1. There are two outs. Wind up and pitch. That's below the knees. One ball, one strike. White is 0 for 2. Reached on an air and a fielder's choice. Left-hander winds up and throws in there for a strike. One ball and two strikes. Lauren, 5 feet 11 inches tall, the left-hander from LaGrange, Ohio, and as we mentioned, went 21 and 18 across four years at the University of Iowa. Six wins in a Bruin uniform, the 1-2. Patient on the changeup and slapping one foul. Keep it a ball and two strikes. One-two pitch, ground ball down to, well, actually Kuro cuts in front of Perez. The throw is high, and off the bag is Washington. I don't know. I think that's Perez softball, but it's an error. Maybe no communication, who knows, but the Utah inning continues. Second error of the game for the Bruins. I feel like that's a play that Perez will make. On the run, as she does, throw sidearm, the whole deal. Kuro cut in front of her and tried to make the play and pulled Washington off the bag. Two outs, Falk is up there. Swing and a miss, 0-1. Ortiz scheduled to hit next. There are two outs. Oh one, change up, nice pitch. Freezes Falk. Oh and two. Bruins will have nine one and two in the bottom of the fifth. That's good in Washington and Perez, each with one hit today. That's popped up foul. Falk still in there. Utah began the day five up and 12 down in the Pac-12. The bottom of the conference. After today, they'll get BYU at home, their rival school. That's a Tuesday night game. Then they'll head back into the Pac-12 for Washington, a three-game set this weekend. That's inside, there goes the runner, sliding in safely. A ball and two strikes. And then Utah to finish the regular season will go to Oregon State for three. Also a Thursday through Saturday, the same weekend Cal wraps it up here. One, two, that is short hopped on the ground, and Kuro will throw over to first, and it gets behind Washington. Eight to nothing, Utah, and would you believe the Bruins are down to their final three outs at Easton Stadium in mercy rule fashion. Four, 
Shelby Ortiz, the hitter. Third Bruin air. All three in the infield twice this inning. Ball chip foul. Nothing in one. One of those days. And today is one of those days. Utah obviously on the verge both of the first two games. Losing one nothing and two nothing. They break through here in game three, and it appears in the process will get their first win over the Bruins in five years, snapping a 13-game slide to them. And there's more to the story than that, by the way. Ortiz up there, nothing in two. You got to go back to February 24th, 2017. Last time the Bruins were mercy ruled. So that's over five calendar years. Hopper back to Shaw. She turns, and the play is made. But the Utes score three times in the fifth. The last time the Bruins were mercy ruled here at Easton First Stadium. home run of the year, and it went off of Megan Faremo, who only lasted two-thirds of an inning today. A strike thrown to good in an 0-1. Megan ends up giving up four runs, two of them earned. Holly Azevedo comes in, and as we knew she would, settled the game down somewhat. In fact, the Bruins had an opportunity with the bases loaded in less than two outs in the third, down 4 to nothing, to make it uh, at least a 4-1, if not 4-2, 4-3 kind of a game. And then Maya Brady hit into a double play to end that threat. Shai Smith misses two balls and one strike. And then Azevedo gives up an infield single in the fourth, made it 5 nothing, And then a two-run home run to Kendall Lundberg, made it 7 nothing, And then another infield error eventually... Gave way for the eighth Utah run. And that's where we're at right now. Two and two. Azevedo in four innings ends up giving up three runs, two of them earned. Ball chip foul. Goes four innings. Faces 17 batters, 63 pitches, 43 going for strikes. Megan Faramo, the pitcher of record. It would be Megan's second loss. Kelly Gooden still up there, two and two. Gooden is officially one for one. Five different Bruins have one hit in this one. There's only one player in the ballpark today with more than one hit, and that's Lundberg, who is two for three, had the home run ball last inning. 2-2 two -two pitch upstairs. 3-2 and two from Shai Smith to Kelly Gooden. Again, Washington and Perez to follow. This group collectively today is three for five, this trio. Shai Smith is the pitcher of record, by the way. 3-2, sharp ground ball down to short and the throw to first. Plenty of time for Denning. One out. So you got to go back more than six full years. The last time the Bruins were mercy ruled at home, got to go back more than seven full years. Last time they were run ruled, period. Utah's two outs away from doing that and ending a 13-game slide to UCLA. Going back five years. 
Ball one to Kinsley Washington. One for two in this one. Washington with five hits this week in this four-game homestand. Fastball swing and a miss. Shai Smith looking for her ninth win. Utah would go back to 500 overall and get their sixth win in the Pac-12. 1-1. Outside, 2-1. And, of course, it would be the Bruins' first loss in this ballpark in 2022 in 19 games. Two-one from Smith. That's a fly ball foul, however, left-hand side off the screen. Two and two. Ball game hits the two-hour mark at Easton Stadium. Both of the first two games went just a couple of minutes over two hours. Washington battling here at two and two. One out and the base is empty. The Bruins are down eight to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. That's popped up, left-hand side, a running play, no play. Nice run for Jimenez, also coming in was Ortiz. Keep it two and two. Two to Washington is high. Go the distance here. Three sixty-eight hitting season. Kinsley Washington. Three-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Two gone. Here comes Brianna Perez, final hope for the Bruins here on a Sunday afternoon. Strikeout number two for Smith. Utah has fanned five today overall. Dirt ball to Perez, 1-0. Utes have walked just one batter. As for Perez, a ground out in the first, a single in the third. Her 307th career hit. one -oh pitch, swing and a miss. Really mixing up the pitch as well. All three Utah pitchers the whole weekend have just been, I just think, lights out. One one. Two and one. If Perez can get aboard, Delaney Wiz would be next. Perez up to three ninety one. That one is fouled back. Bruins down to their final strike.
Game times next weekend at ASU, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 12 noon. Then back here for 3, May 12, 13, and 14 with California, 7, 7, and 2. Are those game times? 2-2, ground ball down a second. This should do it. And Utah has mercy ruled UCLA at East.